Henry Louis Gates Jr., a leading scholar of African American literature, has played a key role in mapping out the heritage of African American literary and critical traditions. His efforts aim to establish this heritage in academic institutions, media, and popular discourse. Gates integrates modern literary theory, including deconstruction and structuralism, with interpretations rooted in African literary traditions. Gates has edited influential anthologies like Black Literature and Theory, a modern anthology of African American literature, and co founded African American journals. His significant works include Figures in Black, Words, Signs, and the Racial Self, published in 1987, and The Signifying Monkey, a theory of African American literary criticism, published in 1988. Gates seeks to redefine race and blackness within post-structuralist theory, emphasizing their cultural and signifying aspects rather than essentialist notions. In the introduction to figures in black, he outlines his approach as, as a black critic, explaining how he engages with contemporary European and American literary theories to analyze black literary traditions. He describes his method as a critical bricolage, using existing materials rather than starting anew. Gates acknowledges the challenge of avoiding a derivative relationship with theory, given the pervasive racism in Western intellectual tradition. He raises dilemma similar to that faced by feminists and other oppressed groups. Can the oppressed avoid perpetuating the language and worldview of the oppressor? Gates suggests that black critics resist theory altogether due to its association with Western discourse dominated by logocentrism and ethnocentrism. However, he notes a growing interest in theory among other black critics driven by a need to address the language of black texts. Despite the racism embedded in Western critical tradition, Gates argues that it should not prevent black critics from theorizing about their own literary endeavors. Gates outlines four stages in the development of African American criticism, reflecting his own intellectual evolution. First, the black aesthetic. At the outset, scholars focused on resurrecting overlooked black texts and defining a distinctly black aesthetic. They were deeply concerned with how black literature related to the broader political struggle for black power. Second, second, repetition and imitation. In this phase, Gates emphasized the importance of the language used in black texts a departure from previous neglect in African-American criticism. He engaged with formalism and structuralism, exploring how these theories applied to black literature. Third, repetition and difference. Gates realized the need for a more critical approach to theory. He began using theory to analyze black texts while also subtly critiquing the limitations of existing theoretical frameworks. Finally, synthesis. In the final stage, Gates focused on integrating his insights. He placed particular emphasis on the black vernacular tradition as a foundation for a theory of Afro-American criticism. This theory aimed to be self-contained, yet connected to other contemporary theories. Gates argues that analyzing the relationship between a black text and its critical context implicitly forms a theory about the origins and nature of Afro-American literature. He suggests that since its beginnings in the 17th century, black literature has been a defiant response to claims of black intellectual inferiority compared to Europeans. Black authors, marginalized and dehumanized, have sought to establish their identity through their own narratives, reclaiming language as a symbol of their presence. However, while Gates addresses the challenge of what language is able to black critics, some argue that his approach continues to subordinate black criticism to the language of modern critical theory. For instance, his focus on the language of black difference may perpetuate reliance on abstract concepts. 
critics question why black criticism should add that originated in context often disconnected from black experiences while gates acknowledges these challenges and draws from native african traditions some argue for a more substantial starting point for black criticism beyond abstract notions like difference